This week, all of Washington was alarmed when Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell seemed to freeze up mid-sentence and just stood there. After nearly 20 seconds, he was helped away from the podium by his colleagues. The 81-year-old senator later came back, said he was fine, and has continued to do his work. But questions now linger over the future of one of the most influential Republicans in the nation's capital. And as this relentless heat wave continues its journey across the country, it is also increasing calls for President Biden to do more to address one of its underlying causes, climate change. Um, Peter Baker, to you first about um, Mitch McConnell. Again, this was just a, such a striking thing for an in, a figure in Washington politics for as long as he has been, for it to be such an influential figure. He says he's going to continue his term and there is no changes in leadership, but it sounds like the Republicans are concerned about this. What is your sense? Yeah, I mean, look, Mitch McConnell has been a giant in Washington now for many years, uh, and he has been one of the most successful party leaders we've seen in a long time in the Senate. So to see him so, uh, you know, weakened in this way, I think has been striking and, 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 and disturbing for a lot of his friends, as well as for some of his rivals. Uh, he, of course, had a fall in March, I believe it was, in which he uh, tripped and broke, uh, I think, uh, he, he, sorry, he got a concussion and he was out for six weeks. Apparently, he's now, uh, we're told he had a couple other falls and we didn't know about. Uh, they use a wheelchair when he goes to the airport to try to get him through uh, to the plane because that's the, the, the best way to go forward. So it reinforces that at 81, he is having troubles that a lot of 81-year-olds would have. And this is something we've seen now repeatedly in the last year or so in Washington. Diane Feinstein, the Democratic senator from, from California, and of course, the big issue, the big controversy, not controversy, but the debate, I would say, over President Biden wanting another term. He himself is 80 right now and has had moments of confusion or, uh, you know, tripping over his memory or something like that. Polls show that's been a big concern for President Biden. So the person other than Mitch McConnell and his supporters who's unhappy about this this week would be probably President Biden in the White House. We would just assume this issue not be front and center. But it reminds us that, you know, our leaders are, in fact, human. They do get older. And the question is, at what point uh, is it right for them to step aside and when can they continue to do their jobs? Um, Anita, in Politico, you all reported uh, just recently that the White House has been watching McConnell in this regard and that concerns over his leadership because it used to be the stereotype was that he was the arch villain for Democrats, the guy who denied Merrick Garland a seat on the Supreme Court. But now, as Politico has been reporting, that he has been seen in some ways as a check on the more rambunctious McCarthy House. And I wonder what your sense is as how Democrats might be thinking about negotiations going forward. Yeah, I mean, that's right. And remember, uh, Joe Biden and Mitch McConnell have a long, long, decades-long history. So uh, you don't really hear them. They, they might have a, a couple funny lines about each other, but you don't really hear them out and out criticizing each other because there is that long history. And remember, Joe Biden's the guy who says, look, I... You know, he, he can get along with anyone. He can cut deals. Uh, it's actually made some people in his party not very happy at some times. Um, so, you know, we, we do see that. I mean, there are definitely people that in the Democratic Party, they do feel like he's the villain, right? I don't think they're going to get that from the White House, but they are feeling that. They are thinking that. You have people in Mitch McConnell's own party uh, thinking, you know, sort of looking at their watch. Is this the time? They're not saying that out loud yet, but people are sort of talking about it and whispering it. I think uh, this week a lot of people were buzzing about this, but they they don't want to say it out loud. Um, that's just not the place yet because it's he has been around for so, so very long. And Leanne, please go ahead. I was ahead. just going to say, and he has such a grip on his party. There has been, he had the biggest, cha closest challenge he had um, to his leadership this year when 13 Republicans voted that he should not be the leader. But but beyond that, he has, like I said, such a grip on his party and no one it's interesting, I was talking to a Republican source on Monday and I asked about McConnell's health. And this, this person- This is prior this to is this This is prior to this, what people are saying, what people are talking about. We know he had the head injury. And this source said, no one talks about it. He, they think his mind is still very strong. No one talks about his age or him getting older. And then this incident happened. People started talking about it a little bit more, but still no one is willing to come out and challenge him. And uh, his team reminds us that he has had a long history 
of falls. He is a polio survivor. He fractured his shoulder in 2019 by falling on his porch. And so they're saying they are also trying to reinforce that he is mentally completely there. He just has always had physical challenges. Uh, Peter Baker, I want to turn lastly to this issue of that we are all experiencing, at least currently almost half the country living under these, these uh, just stupendous heat waves. These have re again brought up this push to press Biden, even though he has already passed some substantive legislation to address climate change, to do more. And I wonder if you think that this kind of a calamity that we are living through with, with uh, electrical grids being taxed all over the country and people literally sweltering, if this does really dial up the pressure on the president and what he might do with that. Yeah, that's a really good question because, of course, you're right. He did pass $350 billion worth of uh, climate action last year as part of the Inflation Reduction Act, the largest expenditure on climate issues uh, in our history. Uh, and yet that doesn't necessarily mean that that's enough, right? A lot of climate activists would say, fine, good start, keep going. That's Don't sit there and, uh, and count, your, uh, count your laurels at this point. The question is whether the heat wave we're seeing, the kind of climate uh, impacts we're seeing right now uh, change the political dynamic at home, right? Does that build a larger, more uh, broad-based consensus among everyday people who can now look outside and see the impact of climate change on their own lives. They can't send their kids to camp. Uh, you know, their air conditions may break, in which case they, they don't know what to do at night with their, their families. You know, that they work is more complicated because of, because of the heat. And if, if this impacts their lives and they associate with climate change, does that mean that the political environment changes over time? Now, there are a lot of people who say, look, this is just weather. Weather happens. It's not, uh, you know, a sign of anything all that big. The question is whether or not the arguments that climate activists have been making get through in a moment like this when people see it in their everyday lives. Um, Leanne, in the last 30 seconds we have, is your sense that this moves the needle, especially with Republicans who have basically shown a good deal of intransigence on any climate action? Not really, no. There's still an all of the above energy uh, policy as far as Republicans are concerned, even the White House too, but they really are intent on ensuring that fossil fuels remain a central part of our energy sector. There are outliers within the Republican Party, but not really. We haven't seen a major shift yet. All right, I think we are gonna to have to leave it there for tonight. Thank you all so much for joining us and for Peter for joining us remotely. And thanks to all of you for joining us as well.